ピピーカピー Hi guys and welcome to the third and final part of Hearthstone nerfs and buffs. In this part, we will cover all neutral card changes since closed beta. For class-specific changes, make sure to check out our prior two videos, and if you enjoy our content, please support this channel by subscribing and leaving a like. The first change is to Sun Fury Protector, which used to give every friendly minion on the board taunt, and now only gives taunt to adjacent minions. Although the old version seems better, there are situations where the new version works better, like if you want to hide a high-value minion on the board behind a big taunt. Pint-sized summoner was changed to reduce the cost of the first minion you play each turn by one mana rather than by two. Before the change, the card was too strong and saw lots of play. Reducing a minion by two mana at the start of each turn was the equivalent of casting a free innervate the next turn if the pint-sized summoner survived, which is a very strong tempo play, so Blizzard killed the card by nerfing the effect to one mana instead. The beast stats were changed from 10-6 to 9-7. 9-7 are actually better stats than 10-6 because a minion with one extra health tends to do better than a minion with one extra attack for the same mana cost. Even at 9-7, the beast is a mediocre legendary that doesn't see any play. Hell, even if the card did not have the death rattle drawback, it would still be too slow and with no immediate effect on the board to see any play. It seems that the priest class was severely underpowered in beta because the class got lots of class specific buffs as well as buffs to neutral cards usually associated with the class. The first of these cards was Light Warden, which was buffed to gain plus 2 attack per heal rather than plus 1 attack. Although the card is a neutral card, this buff was an indirect buff to Priest, as it is the main class that can trigger the effect reliably. Even with the buff, the card was too weak as a 1-2 body to make it into a competitive Priest deck, but it had its moment in the limelight as a minion summoned from the Light of the Naru spell in GVG. <laughs> Besides the Light Warden buff we just covered, Injured Blade Master's attack was raised from 3 to 4. Just like the Light Warden, Injured Blade Master synergizes most with Priest because the class has the ability to neutralize its battle cry drawback by either healing the card with its hero power, or even better, by playing Circle of Healing. The card saw lots of play in Control Priest and the Resurrect Priest of One Knight in Karazhan, where it was a huge tempo swing to resurrect Injured Blade Master using the Resurrect spell or Onyx Bishop. Frostwolf Warlord was changed to have the plus one plus one effect as a permanent battle cry rather than an ongoing effect. Before the change, its stats would go up and down based on the number of friendly minions in play. Even with the change, the card did not see much play because reliably controlling a board in Hearthstone is very difficult, and without other friendly minions in play, it is an abysmal 4-4 body for 5 mana. Twilight Drake was nerfed into a 4-1 with Battlecry gain plus 1 health for each card in your hand, from a 1-1 with Battlecry gain plus 1 plus 1 for each card in your hand. Before the nerf, a handlock could play a 10-10 Twilight Drake on turn 4, so if you thought the 4 mana 7-7 is broken, we used to have a 10-10 for 4 mana with no overload. Although the older version of Twilight Drake was better in most cases, it was weaker to BGH and to Priest's Shadow Word death. Captain's Parrot was nerfed by reducing its health to 1. A 1-2 one body for 2 mana that drew a pirate for your pirate synergy was deemed overpowered so the devs nerfed him to a 1-1 one one instead. As a 1-1, one one, he is more in line with Novice Engineer. Even in the pirate meta of Mean Streets of Gadget Sand, the Parrot did not see much love because in a hyper-aggressive deck, playing a 1-1 one one on turn 2 did not help in killing the opponent by turn 5 before they can play their Reno. Speaking of pirates, Captain Greenskin used to be very different in closed beta. Prior to the nerf, he used to be a 5-5 with the effect of drawing a card whenever you attack with your hero. A 5-5 body for 5 mana is not bad by itself, but the effect of drawing cards when your hero attacks made him too powerful. If you got one swing of your weapon, you have a 5-5 body that drew a card, which is pretty darn good, but if you could trigger the effect twice, like with Doomhammer or Foolsbane or across two turns, then the effect is insane. Similar to Captain's Parrot, Novice Engineer was nerfed by reducing its stats from 1-2 to 1-1. The card back then was played in most non-rush decks, and even some rush decks due to its cost and power level, so it was reduced to give other 2 mana drops a shot. Even as a 1-1, Novice Engineer saw some competitive play, mainly in some combo decks like Freeze Mage which use it to cycle through their decks faster to draw the combo pieces. Dalaran Mage used to be a 2-4 rather than a 1-4. A 3 mana 2 4 that gave plus 1 spell power was played in too many decks, so Blizzard reduced his attack by 1 and in the process erased him from the game. Lorewalker Cho used to have 1 extra attack. 
As a 1-4, his stats weren't bad and he might have actually seen some play these days as a tech card against spell heavy decks, but without the extra attack, he is too easily killed by enemy minions to see any serious play. He still finds himself a home in some fun decks though, like the Chosho Priest decks of Hobbs. Well, I'm gonna try to get it to flip over. I might be able to do it. Every time you double, you're like, oh, it's a billion or whatever the number is, but you know, we're already at what? 200,000, then 400,000, then five, you know, we're at half a million, then we're at a million, then we're at two million, then we're at four, like, we could do it. Mana Wraith's body was changed from 1-3 to 2-2. Two, two. For 2-2, two, two, its stats are too weak for two mana to see any play. Shattered Sun Cleric was nerfed from a 3-3 three, three to a 3-2. Three, As a 3-3, three, three, it used to provide 4-4 four, four worth of stats for three mana, which was pretty strong. Also in that particular meta, it kept the creature rush decks healthy enough to avoid many board clearing spells. As a 3-2, it is now completely lost and forgotten. Argent Commander was nerfed from a 4-3 to a 4-2. As a 4-3 body, he was played a lot back then so his power level was reduced a little by reducing his health by 1. Due to the constant power creep in the game, even if he was still a 4-3 today, he would be too understated to see any play. Charge minions in the game these days are used as finishers, and why would I use a 6 mana 4 attack finisher when I can have a 5 mana 6 attack Leroy instead? Sylvanas Windrunner used to cost 5 mana and she was nerfed to cost 6. Even for 6 mana, she is still one of the most powerful legendaries in the game because of her devastating death rattle ability. She has not seen much play recently due to the super aggressive pirate meta, and she will be bidding standard farewell as she moves into the wild in the Year of the Mammoth rotation as a member of the new Hall of Fame card set. Defender of Argus was nerfed from a 3-3 to a 2-3. As a 3-3 body, it gave you 5-5 worth of stats for 4 mana, which is really strong. Even with the nerf, the card has found a home in control type decks like Handlock or Reno Lock, more aggressive decks like Zoo Lock, and even some mid-range decks like Dragon Priest. It also has great synergy with Brand Bronzebeard, where it can give you 6-7 worth of stats for 4 mana. Dark Iron Dwarf's battle cry of giving a minion plus 2 attack now only works till the end of turn. This change was made to reduce the card's overall power slightly and to make the battle cry effect in line with abusive sergeants as to not create confusion. The card saw some play early on in Zulok where it helped in establishing board control by allowing smaller minions to trade up into bigger ones. Abusive Sergeant has undergone two changes. The first change allowed him to target both friendly and enemy minions. That provided him with more versatility because now he can also be used defensively to buff an opponent's 5 or 6 attack minion into BGH range. More recently, his body was nerfed into a 1-1 because he was considered too OP as a 1 mana drop in aggressive and zoo decks. Nat Pagel was changed to have a 50% chance to draw an extra card at the start of the turn rather than the end of it. Back in beta, Nat had too much draw power for a card that was fairly hard to counter early in the game, making him almost an auto-include for many decks. This small change allowed opponents to kill Nat for free before he can draw any cards, and thus made the card unplayable. Tink Master Overspark was changed from a 2-2 to a 3-3, and his ability was changed subtly to transform another random minion into a 5-5 Devil Soar or a 1-1 Squirrel. Before that, you can target which creature to transform, thus allowing you to neutralize some big creatures like Deathwing and Ragnaros. That was huge because in the worst case scenario, you silence the creature and transform it into a 5-5. In the best case scenario, you are playing a 2-2 minion for 3 mana that applies a polymorph, so not only are you getting a polymorph effect for 1 less mana, but also you are playing a 2-2 body. Nowadays, because his ability is applied to a random minion, he is too unreliable to see any more competitive play. The next two changes were made to address the dominant Miracle Rogue deck back in the early days. Gadget Sand Auctioneer was the card draw engine of the Miracle Rogue, enabling you to cycle through your entire deck by casting Rogue's cheap efficient spells until you got your win condition of Leroy Coldblood or a gigantic Edwin Van Cleef. Its power level was too much for its mana cost, so the card was nerfed to 6 mana. This nerf and the introduction of Lotheb seemed to keep the card in check for a while. Once Lotheb and other defensive cards like Sludge Belcher and Antique Heelbot rotated into Wild, the Miracle Rogue deck started to surface again thanks to the Auctioneer. He also managed to find his way into some other card cycling decks like Maladruid and Jade Druid. Gadget Zan Auctioneer was heavily considered being added to the Hall of Fame by Blizzard, but he survived the first cut. 
It is likely he will be moved there at some point as the card's effect is extremely powerful and will probably be exploited at some point in the future. The second nerf to Miracle Rogue was to Leroy Jenkins. For 4 mana, Leroy was too powerful of a finisher, and he could be played in combination with 2 Shadow Steps and 2 Cold Bloods for 26 damage out of nowhere. After he was nerfed to 5 mana, he did not see much play for a while as he was deemed less efficient than the 3 mana Arcane Golem. When Arcane Golem lost its charge ability, Leroy came back into the limelight, and these days he finds a home in several top tier decks like Pirate Warrior, the combo Reno Lock with P.O. and Faceless, Miracle Rogue, and the newer Water Rogue. During Nax, Aggro Hunter dominated the meta with a win rate of around 60%, higher than any other deck in the history of Hearthstone. The main reason behind the Hunter dominance was the Broken Undertaker card, which used to gain plus one plus one for every Death Rattle minion summoned. It was mainly the plus one health the game that broke the card because it was very difficult to kill it in the early turns before it snowballed out of control. If you play the Undertaker on turn one and play two Death Rattle minions on turn two, you already had a 3-4 body that kept growing. The card was nerfed by limiting the plus one gain to the attack attribute, and that made the card much weaker because it could be easily killed now by any two plus damage spell or two attack minion. The next series of cards were nerfed in the introduction to Standard because they were too strong in their mana slots or they had some effects that the devs wanted to address. Molten Giant's cost was increased from 20 to 25. At 20 mana, it was too easy to play for free by reducing your health to 10. It used to see a lot of play in Handlock and Reno Lock and in the innovative Echo Mage deck from GVG. At a cost of 25 mana, however, you will need to reduce your health to 5 to play it for free, which is quite risky. In Blizzard's charge mechanic nerf spree, Arcane Golem was nerfed by increasing its body from 4-2 to 4-4 while removing its charge ability. Before the nerf, the drawback of giving the opponent a mana crystal was irrelevant because the card was mainly used as a finisher in OTK combo decks. After the nerf, the card has too much of a downside to see any competitive play. Both Leaper Gnome and Knife Juggler lost one attack. Both cards were so strong for their mana cost that they were auto-includes in aggressive decks in the 1 and 2 mana slots, so Blizzard reduced their attack power by 1 to give a chance to newer cards to be played in their place. Big Game Hunter was too efficient of a big minion removal for 3 mana, and it limited the ability of Blizzard to print interesting large late game minions because whoever played them was easily countered by BGH. Blizzard nerfed BGH to 5 mana and at that cost he rarely sees any play anymore. The sad part is that the devs decided to print a 4 mana 7 7 at the same time that they nerfed BGH, among other broken shaman cards that ushered in the new era of shaman stone. The last card that was nerfed in the introduction to Standard was Ironbeak Owl. Ironbeak Owl was a staple source for an inexpensive silence in many decks. In line with the devs' overall goal to make silence effects more costly, Ironbeak Owl was moved from 2 to 3 mana. For that cost, the minion is too weak of a body and players prefer using Spellbreaker if they need silence in their decks. The last neutral card that was nerfed was the old god Yogg-Saron himself. When Blizzard printed the card, they did not expect him to be too powerful. Even the pros thought that the card would be a fun card that will see no competitive play. It turned out that Yogg-Saron was too powerful, so powerful in fact that it made it into many competitive decks and changed the outcome of many competitive games with a flip of a coin. Competitive players were really upset about the RNG aspect of the game, especially with the king of RNGs as Yogg-Saron himself, so Blizzard had to take action. They changed the card to now stop casting spells if it's destroyed, silenced, transformed, or returned to the hand. Because Yogg tended to do that often, the card became much less reliable to see competitive play, and the whole competitive scene took a sigh of relief that the RNG madness of the god of madness himself was over. Let's just hit the end turn button. We're still playing more spells. Counterspell? We're gonna survive!